Are we? Oh, it says we're live. It says we're live. Good. Okay, folks, we're live. We got a couple minutes before we get started. Please excuse, but uh, I'll be wiping some sweat off today. She's a hot one. Let's see, Hagen, do we got volume? Maybe someone will give us a thumbs up. You can hear it on the phone there. Let's see. It says I'm live. Can I hear myself talk, though? Yep. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It says I'm live. Perfect. Beautiful. Perfect, Ethan. Thank you much for being able to hear you. Rick, thank you. Phew. She's a hot one, folks. This could be a record short. Although, this is a good weight loss program. <laughs> really good weight loss program. Looks like we've got uh, some people logging in. What, 37 viewers? That's good. People are excited about Devil's Lake, and they should be. So we'll give her just a few more minutes, and we'll get started here. Alrighty, it's 7 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get fired up. Welcome, folks, to uh, live seminar number four this year. Uh, every month, the first Wednesday of the month, uh, September and October, last two. So, man, it seems crazy that summer is uh, winding down. It's back to school, football practice. I heard there's a a football scrimmage this Saturday here in Devil's Lake already. That seems crazy. But that's kind of fun, right? Fall uh, is a good time of the year. It signifies a lot of things coming. We, I think we all love fall fishing, so that's kind of cool. Let's uh, get started with some statistics about the lake first. I wrote some stuff down. I looked it up today. Lake elevation, for those that are wondering about stuff like this, uh, 1,450 feet, 0 .03 above sea level. 30 days ago today, 1,450.56. So almost uh, one half of a foot, six inches down from a month ago. Uh, I'd say that's about, uh, I mean, my eye says that's accurate. You're starting to see water lines on bridges and shorelines. So the water's going down a little bit. I have no idea how much they're moving with pumps, but man, the last couple of days, hot, dry, uh, humid, that water's gotta be just evaporating like mad. And we'll see the lake drop a fair amount here in the next month or two. It always seems to in the fall of the year drop, but I think we're still a net positive from uh, the beginning of the year. So that's a good thing. Water temperature today, uh, in the morning, not in the middle of the day, because that's kind of sun-aided, that's really not accurate. 73.6 degrees today on the surface. Last month for the seminar, 71.2. So really only up two and a half degrees. Uh, that seems like it's not warming up that quickly to me for as hot as it's been. Uh, we've had some scorchers here the last couple days. Uh, algae is getting worse by the day. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, the next day, I expect it to be like fishing through a blanket of shag carpet. Uh, no wind at all today, not a breath of wind, and the algae started to get thick. Uh, thicker in some places than others, obviously. 
Uh, you, you can use the algae to see where there's current, that's for sure, under bridges uh, where the wind does blow around a point, a uh, very light breeze stacks it up against the shore and it gets worse. I haven't had any instances yet where I couldn't fish because the algae was too thick, but that happens from now through the end of August into September, so be prepared for that. So those are lake statistics. Uh, one other thing before we get into fishing, what's working, where it's working, all that stuff. Uh, leeches, I get, get asked quite a bit. Uh, I'm not gonna speak for any one bait shop in particular, but I've struggled to find leeches. Uh, if you're planning on coming this weekend, please obey all the laws when it comes to transporting bait. But uh, if you can bring your own, I would say bring your own if you plan on using leeches. Uh, yes, there might be some floating around. Again, I have not stopped at any particular bait shop. I'm not going to mention names. I'm just going to say that I drive around, drive around, drive around, drive around, and maybe can get a couple dozen here or there. Uh, it's been really tough to get leeches. So I think that's about over for the year. Uh, boy, if you saved a bunch up though, man, now's the time to use them because uh, while I don't see them for very long and then all of a sudden you put one down there and it's literally like holding a lollipop in front of a two-year-old in a, in a baby buggy, they grab onto that sucker and they don't let go. So it's, uh, it's a good time to have leeches if you've saved them up and they will eat them like mad. What's going on on the lake right now? Well, it's very, very typical first week of August. Uh, fishing is good, very, very solid. This morning we had a two person, 10 fish limit of fish between 14 and 16 inches. Uh, put the boat in at seven o'clock this morning and by quarter to nine, we had 10. Uh, that's pretty quick fishing. We stayed on the water for quite a while after that, quit fishing around noon, noon 30 when it got hot, and probably threw back five more limits of fish uh, that were keepers. Uh, kept my five a little bit bigger in that uh, 16 to 18 inch range. We upped the standards and ended up catching uh, five more, a little bit better quality fish as well. So the fish are biting and they're biting really, really well. Uh, where are they biting? Well, from the east end of the lake to the west end of the lake, they're biting. And it's very, very similar patterns all the way across the lake. So I'll describe to you some of the things that are going on out there as far as fish locations. The first thing, which is world famous this time of the year, you've heard me talk about it a lot. We're gonna talk about it more tonight, is the old Devil's Lake shoreline. Flooding started here about 1992, 1993. There's many, many, many options out there for historical data overlays for GPS units, whether it's a Humminbird, Lawrence, Garmin, uh, they all have it, they all have different ways to show it. If you can get a hold of an aerial overlay from 1990, you will see where the Devil's Lake shoreline was in 1990. Even Google Earth will show you, slide the timeline back, 1990. You want to concentrate on that old Devil's Lake shoreline. For decades and decades and decades, that was the depth of Devil's Lake. And the waves eroded away at the shore and made a nice, wide, clean path. Gravel, rock, whatever kind of substrate was down there, all the dirt, all the brush, all the vegetation got washed away. The fish retreat, when the water gets warm, they hit this nice band of clean bottom, and that's where they hang out for most of the summer. So you find that depth, just start idling along, looking at your depth finder. Use your side imaging, use your down imaging, use your 2D sonar, you will see these fish. And when you see ones and twos, keep driving. You will know when it's the right time to put a lure in the water. Pods of four, five, six, 10 fish, and then 30 yards later, another pod of five or six fish uh, it's real obvious where they're at. I could sit here and ramble on and on and on and on about shorelines that have been producing. The problem is I'll be here all night because they're literally everywhere. Uh, I, I found them in the East Bay. I found them in the main lake. They're up in the old Devil's Lake shoreline in Pelican Lake, the Minnewaukan Flats. Anywhere you can find that old ring of Devil's Lake shoreline, 
drive around till you see fish. Next area or pattern that I found is fishing the edges of hard bottom areas. Uh, stock ponds that had a pile of rock and gravel. Uh, maybe an old rocky point. There's a couple natural rocky points in Devil's Lake without question. They're out there. Glacial lakes have rock deposits all over the place. Flooded roadbeds uh, on the windy days or if you have enough shade like I did today with the algae covering uh, that shallow water, catching as shallow as 12 feet, right? Uh, old sewer ponds, any of that kind of stuff. Start out up on top if you have wind or if you have zero wind and the algae has made a nice blanket to keep the light penetration down. If you don't catch on top, slowly work down the edges and start looking around the base of these rock piles, rocky areas, that rock to mud transition. And we're not talking super deep water here. I'm talking 14, 15 feet of water. The last two days, I have not fished deeper than 16 feet of water for my limits. Uh, they're up there. They're up there. Those shallow fish are biting really well. They're a little bit more aggressive. The bites are a little bit harder, easier to feel. So that's a good thing as well. Uh, flooded roadbeds, I talked about there a little bit. And then weed edges. Uh, anywhere from 8 to 12, 14 feet outside of weed edges. Not all weeds are created equal. The thicker the weeds, the more fish you're going to find around them. Uh, I don't know how many of you over your lifetime have gone swimming in the summertime and walked through a weed bed. Man, does the water temperature drop rapidly inside those weeds. Green weeds give off, give off oxygen, which this time of year uh, the fish are really looking for. They provide a lot of shelter, places to ambush and hide, a lot of place for bait fish to hang out and hide. And again, spending time around the outside edges of weeds, there's a fish there. Lots and lots of fish there. So those are the three main patterns right now in Devil's Lake. Again, uh, old lake shoreline, rock piles, rock structure, and the edges of those, and then weed edges. Uh, how are we fishing them? Uh, right now, the, my best producer personally has been bottom bouncers and spinners. Uh, you can pull just about any kind of spinner you want. Uh, hammered gold, hammered silver, hammered copper, uh, I've heard a lot of pink and purple working well, uh, but I put a two ounce bottom bouncer on, whether I'm in nine feet of water or 29 feet of water, and just start covering water. About a mile an hour, some days a little slower, some days a little quicker, but cover some ground. Uh, you find those pods of fish, troll through them three or four times, you're gonna get them to go. And once you get them to go, it seems like they keep biting for quite a while, so that's working out well. I've had some really, really good luck on Max Smile Blades, and I've got a few here. Uh, Jay, if you want to switch the camera over, we'll show the folks what exactly I've been using. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Max Smile Blade, this is uh, what they look like right here. They're the Mylar uh, wings. They're shaped like a smile, so that's why they call them Smile Blades. This is a size 1.1. I've also had luck on a size 1.5, which is the next size bigger. Colors, this one's called UV Glow Burst. It is a whitish color, it's UV, it glows in the dark. Mother of Pearl works really, really well. The next color I've had really good luck on, and it might look almost exactly, ah, no, you can see it pretty well. It's called UV Purple Haze. Again, it's got uh, UV reflective properties little bit of a purple hue and the last color I've been using a lot and doing well is the gold with black scale gold with black scale right there you can see that pretty good on there so those are the three colors I've been using I put three beads size five millimeter between the hook and these blades and I am color matching my gulp. Maybe I'm a little anal retentive that way. Maybe it's just my incredible sense of fashion that I have to match all the time. What do you think, Jay? Fashion? My fashion sense. But I'm, I can't argue with what's going on and those of you that follow me see my results. Behind the UV glow burst, pearl white. Can't beat it. Pearl silver, I think they actually call it. Uh, three inch, two and a half inch, you pick, doesn't matter. This matches up really, really well with that UV glow burst right there. 
Behind the purple haze, this is a brand new color. Came out this March. It's called Starry Night. It's uh, kind of translucent with a gray back. Mother of Pearl, but it's got purple glitter inside the bait. It's been working really, really well behind that purple smile blade. And then behind the gold smile blade, I'm using a color called Pyrite Shiner. This is one that I was not real familiar with until early this spring, but it's actually a gold glitter metal flake gulp minnow. And man, you put that behind that gold spinner with three or four gold beads, uh, a single hook, and it's, they've been absolute deadly, deadly, those three colors. I have played a little bit with chartreuses and oranges, trying to imitate perch, but quite honestly, these three colors, killing it. I use an old school bait holder hook, just like you used to buy pre-snelled back in the day on the bottom rack at Kmart, if you can remember Kmart. Uh, I thread those on like you would put them on a jig. That way the fish can't pull them off. You want to keep them straight. I have noticed that when they start falling off the hook, they get a funny kink in them. They don't go through the water quite right and they don't seem to catch fish. But folks, this is no BS. I have not had a night crawler in my boat this year. Not one day have I had a worm in my boat and I'm having zero trouble uh, catching walleye here in Devil's Lake. Uh, I know a lot of people say some days the gulp works better than worms. Sometimes worms work better than gulp. Uh, I can't say that because I don't take a worm. And we're putting fish on the board day after day after day after day. But you want to thread them on there. I'm using a leader about 30 inches long, 15 pound fluorocarbon. Again, the max smile blade, three or four beads, single hook, thread the gulp up on there. It's been absolute money, money for me so far and uh, I don't see that changing. Next technique that people are using quite a bit, uh, trolling. Long line trolling with fire line. Uh, if you're a little bit deeper on that Old Lake shoreline, uh, lead core and uh, fire line leader, but whatever it takes to get the lures down near the bottom and they're humping along two, two and a half miles an hour and the crankbaits are catching plenty of fish too. Uh, outside the weed edge, obviously, you're probably not going to need lead core. Uh, 50, 75 feet of fire line, your favorite Devil's Lake crankbait, be it a, a flicker shad or a jointed flicker shad, a jointed shad wrap. Maybe you use uh, Salmo Hornets. I really like that 4.5 and 5.5 rattling hornet. Those worked really well for me last year. And then uh, what's the new Berkeley bait? Uh, help me out. Um, the one everybody was all hot on this year kind of looks like a hornet, short and fat. I'm, I'm struggling here to, to remember. Yeah, the, the money badger, money badger. There you go, the money badger. Uh, I have not trolled those yet, but boy, I'm thinking there's no way those aren't going to work. Uh, for colors here on Devil's Lake, folks, I've talked about it a lot. You want to go with whites, uh, silvers, perch colors fire tigers, those kind of things. You don't need to get complicated here at all. If it looks like a white bass or it looks like a perch and you put it in front of a fish, you're gonna catch them. Uh, if you're not sure where the fish are and you wanna look for fish while you're fishing or fish while you're looking, however you wanna say it, what better way to throw a crankbait down or two and just drive around? Uh, you're gonna catch fish and odds are you're gonna catch some bigger fish. I've heard a lot of reports from north and west. Trolling's producing some good fish up there. I'm sure the Golden Highway, if it's not too crowded, get out there and troll crankbaits and whack them. And again, get up there in that 9 to 12 feet of water and find a weed edge and, and troll around. Another technique that will work still this time of year, especially if you like to be a little more active in the boat, is casting. Uh, those weed edges, 9 feet, 12 feet, put a jig on a quarter ounce or 3 eighths ounce jig head, maybe even heavier. Try a half ounce, fish it even faster or cast a crankbait parallel to those weed edges. It's really no different than trolling along the weed edge. Put it in front of a fish, you're gonna get bit. Uh, a lot of guys really, really like to cast. They're not so keen on the trolling. So get up there and fire away. Have at it. Uh, I will say on a day like today, if you're gonna be that active, take lots of water because you'll drink it all. Last thing that's starting to work. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it's knocking knocking the socks off of them just yet. 
but I am having some success starting to on the deeper rock piles, deeper rock transitions with heavy metal, right? Jig and wraps, shiver minnows, hyper rattles, hyper glides, jigging spoons, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, boy, big Max Wilson win in the NWT on the de death jig. Those weigh three quarters of an ounce to an ounce. I don't see why a guy couldn't throw them down there in 28 to 30 feet of water on a rock pile. Uh, but those isolated rock piles, that heavy metal jigging is starting to kick in. And that's going to get better and better and better through the month of August into September. Uh, some of my favorite time of the year to fish with those big heavy jigging baits is coming up soon. So that is the fishing report. I know it's not a long one. Um, I cleared this with uh, corporate headquarters that I don't have to sit here and sweat all night long. So I'm going to open it up to questions. Uh, I always ask um, if people have questions. <clears throat> so let's open it up for questions. While we're waiting for questions, I have got a list of some cool stuff coming up in the lake region that we want to talk about. First thing, I want to give uh, hats off to the Lake Region Anglers Association. Again, my buddy Jay that no one can see is the president of the Lake Region Anglers. And after a lot of waiting and a couple of, uh, let's call them mulligans, uh, the Henniger Ramp Site Fish Cleaning Station is now open and up and running again. Uh, new concrete floor, part of it. A brand new double basin stainless steel sink and a new Barracuda grinder. So everything at the Henniger Land, oh and a wall. We built a wall up on one side to protect it from the wind. So the Henniger Landing fish cleaning station, I know not a lot of people launch there, but boy, I do it. Graham's Island State Park, Six Mile Bay is backed up. Throw some ice in the live well, drive around the Henniger Landing and clean my fish there. Try to beat the crowd. Now this weekend, Henniger will be crowded and I can clean at all the other places. So that'll work good too. But it looks really, really nice. Uh, and I do believe now every one of the Devil's Lake managed, the City of Devil's Lake or Devil's Lake Tourism managed fish cleaning stations all have the Barracuda grinders now. No more of the old whirly bird garbage disposal stuff flying out all over the place. Everything now, Barracuda grinder, nice and quiet. They all have double basin sinks or at least a single basin sink and a table. And they all have some kind of wind block. So that's uh, kudos again to the Lake Region Anglers. If you fish Devil's Lake a lot and you're not a member of the Lake Region Anglers, shame on you. Shame on you. Go to lakeregionanglers.com and sign up. It's 20 bucks, 25, 20 bucks, 20 bucks a year. How can you go wrong? 20 bucks a year, it's for a good cause. Let's see, events, crazy days. The good old Devil's Lake downtown, everything's on sale, sale. Starts tomorrow and goes through Sunday, the 6th of August. So if you're in town, too hot to fish, go downtown, do some shopping, get some ice cream from my brother-in-law's ice cream shop. Selfless plug there. You owe me for that one, Dave. Uh, and enjoy crazy days. After that, next weekend, August 12th and 13th, I told myself I wasn't going, but I keep looking at this lineup, Jay, and... A couple of 80s long-haired rock and roll guys like us should probably mm. go. We should probably go. Makes me want to grow my hair out again. Not really. <laughs> Hairball, Quiet Riot, and Slaughter on August 12th. Come on, feel the noise. Girls rock your boys, right? Quiet Riot. August 12th. August 13th, Warrant, Lita Ford, and Firehouse. Love of a lifetime, right? Want me to sing it? finally found no I'm not gonna sing it August 13th 12th and 13th you can buy a one-day pass for either day or a pass for the whole weekend uh, go to the casino website Spirit Lake Casino Google search that you can get tickets for that event uh, the Devil's Lake community corn and fish fry corn feed and fish fry August 17th I believe that's a Thursday night right uh, I will be there helping to cook this year Unless it's hot like this, then they're on their own. Uh, no, I'll be there to cook this year, August 17th. Uh, what a great event. Free will offering. Uh, 
fresh, well not fresh walleye, but caught in June, Chamber of Commerce Tournament walleye. Corn will be ready to go, should be good. Uh, and come on out and support the community. Five o'clock till the fish are gone. So we serve till they're gone. Probably will run out this year. Chamber tournament's only one day now. Uh, but there were a lot of fish. A lot of fish caught, a lot of limits. Should be good. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about before I jump on these questions, Nor National Walleye Trail Championship, September 6th, 7th and 8th out of Grams Island State Park, I believe. Uh, should be a good time. The 40 best, well, not the 40 best because Jay and I aren't in it, so it can't be the 40 best. 40 of the best professional walleye anglers in the country. No, they're, they're all great anglers, great guys earned, earned the spot. Uh, that's going to be fun. We'll all learn a lot about how to catch those big fish. So, Jay, let's jump on some questions here. What do you got? I a question. Jared Slind, would you suggest fishing on the Golden Highway or off in the ditch of the okay. Golden Highway? So in case you didn't hear, Jay, the question is, on the Golden Highway, the ditch of the Golden Highway. My general rule of thumb is the top is for tourists. <laughs> if you don't fish here a lot, you want to go to the Golden Highway, catch a limited eaters, fish the top of the Golden Highway. Fish all over it, troll right down the middle, it's real easy. Don't lose a lot of tackle, it's an old blacktop road, pretty straightforward trolling. What I have found traditionally over the years, you go down in the ditch, fish where that old rip wrap hits the mud, like I talked about earlier, transition rock to mud. It's a lot harder to fish down there. You make a mistake to the, excuse me, to the shallow side, you're gonna lose a lot of tackle. But traditionally larger fish in the ditch. I honestly prefer the fish in the ditch myself just because of how many big fish, and I mean big fish, 26, 27, 28, 29 inch walleye, that I have caught out of that ditch. So I do prefer the ditch, but they both hold fish. What else you got, Jay? You got nothing That's it? All right, let's see here. I've got, uh, I got some questions here. Do you use auto chart on Devil's Lake? Rick, uh, let's see, Donald Schiffner. Donald, I do, I did. I am not recording more data now because I've recorded so much the past few years, but I did go out to some of my favorite spots and laid down an auto chart live map. Those of you that aren't familiar with auto chart live, it's Humminbird's do-it-yourself map mapping software. Um, you can drive around, build your own map. There's a lot of spots, stock dams, old farmer rock piles, all that kind of stuff that are not on any map. You can find them on Google Earth, put a waypoint, drive out to them, map them yourself, then you know exactly where they're at, how they look, all that kind of thing. Auto Chart Live works very, very well here in Devil's Lake. Leo Rickmers, how's it going, old friend? Anything on shore fishing? Well, Leo, all I can tell you is the bridges are getting more and more popular by the day. There were probably 15 people at the Mave Cooley Bridge this morning. Uh, man, you get any kind of wind this time of year, there's going to be fish starting to move. Uh, water's getting warmer. They're going to go from warm water to cool water. They like that current going under the bridge. I've done really, really well in the past in some MWC tournaments, middle to the end of August, fishing jigging wraps at the bridge when there's current there. I would say the bridges are your best bet right now for shore fishing. I've got what type of water do you target in September and October and your preferred method? That's Jeremy Carlson. Jeremy, um, it all depends how quick the water cools down. If the water stays warm into September, I'm going to be fishing just like I am now, everything we talked about today. Uh, as the water cools off, I like structure with steep edges, flooded roads with a big ditch. Uh, maybe the moon bars and the Pelican Ridge up north. Uh, some of the deeper rock piles out in the main lake down around Fort Totten. Stuff with really steep edges, quick breaks, quick escape routes to deep water. And I'm either going to be trolling lead core or I'm going to be fishing jig and wraps. That's pretty much my fall. I take everything else out of the boat and I fish jig wraps or troll lead core. That's about it. Uh, David Luker, do you ever use a stinger hook on your gulp 
rig setups? And my answer, Dave, is no. If they're hungry enough, they're eating the whole thing. Uh, they're not real big. It's a three inch middle, three beads and a spinner. Actually, most of the fish I caught today were hooked well inside the mouth. We actually kept a few that we might not have normally kept because they were hooked deep. Uh, they were eating them that well. So uh, what I've found over the years, if the fish wants your spinner, that trailer hook doesn't really add much to the, to the situation. You're gonna get them on the front hook and hopefully you don't deep hook as many fish with that trailer hook. I don't think it would hurt anything, Dave, but uh, I don't use one, no. Jay, do we have another question? Ethan Preston asks, are mud basins producing any walleye? Ethan, right now, I'm not having the luck that I've had fishing those areas previous years. Now, I will admit, I have not spent a lot of time there because what I'm doing near the rocky areas are working well. I have seen fish, tr or not fish, boats, trolling around in the basin areas. Uh, not going to say who they are, but when it's the same boat three days in a row out over the mud, and I happen to know they fish for a living, it tells me there's probably some fish out there over the mud. But personally, I have not done it yet. Soon as I see a dragonfly though, that's when I go out there. I haven't seen many dragonflies yet this summer, uh, but when I do, I'll head out there. So let's see, I see one here. How do I overlay old maps on a hummingbird? Uh, Kendall, I'm gonna ask you, because that's complicated, to shoot me an email. Uh, Johnny at G-O-N-D-T-C dot com. Go to my website, johnnycandle.com. My email address is there. I will walk you through that in an email because it's way too complicated to try to get into on a video online. Uh, I believe that's about it, right? Yep. Yeah, I see uh, Lake Region Anglers download message map on Hummingbird. Can you see the old on your depth finder. I kind of answered that question already. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I think we got them all. I think we got them all. I don't see any more on there. So, folks, uh, I know you can't really tell on camera. Maybe you can, but I've lost 10 pounds sitting here for a half hour. My shirt isn't soaked through yet, and I don't really want it to be. But uh, to wrap things up, man, guys, gals, women, children, if you want to go catch some fish and get a fish fry for your freezer, you need to get here. And you need to get here soon. Uh, I'm not going to say the fishing is stupid easy, but I'm going to say the fishing right now is stupid easy. Uh, if you find them, you get something down in front of them, you're going to catch them. Uh, spinners, crankbaits, gulp, worms, if you have some leeches, a jig, a bobber, uh, it has not been hard to catch fish. It may take a while to find fish, but I think we've got such a large population of fish right now that for the first time that I've lived here, there's some competition for food. And the bites are not, oh gee, I think I have one. When you get a bite, you know you get a bite. And that tells me those fish are racing to get to your bait because there's other fish competing to get to the food as well. Uh, seriously, a two day weekend, bring your wife and kids and you're gonna have a fish fry for the family like you wouldn't believe. Uh, it's a really good time, really fun. Again, if you have more specific questions, feel free to hit me up. Find me on Facebook, Johnny Candle Professional Angler. You can reach out to me through the Devil's Lake Tourism. Uh, again, my website, johnnycandle.com. Phone call, text, whatever you take, I'll help you out. But folks, get here to Devil's Lake. Enjoy it. Uh, if you do get out this weekend, stay cool, take lots to drink. And if you see me on the water, uh, wave at me, smile at me, say hi and uh, maybe we'll chat for a little bit. But other than that, folks, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, first Wednesday of September, we'll be right back here at 7 o'clock. I'll see you there. Take care. Whoo! Hagen, it's hot.